Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, reporting to you here today with Bob Beatty, Farm Advisor Emeritus for the UC Cooperative Extension. He contributes regularly to our uh, pistachio orchard tasks in Pacific Net Producer, does a fantastic job. Um, I want to talk today about spring nutrition for new orchards, uh, pistachio orchards. We heard, you know, at the pistachio conference here that we had a record amount of pistachio plantings in the industry, and there's a lot of growers, a lot of new growers out there might be interested in, in finding out a couple things. So could you tell us about, you know, what to look for and how to manage the nutri nutrition there? Well, certainly if you're planting a young orchard, Matthew, it's important as goes without saying that you do not want to have a weedy field when you plant a young pistachio orchard because you will hate yourself. Uh, those weeds will be so aggressive and you'll spend a fortune in hand pruning to try and, and reduce the competition that those weeds are placing on that rootstock and typically we plant rootstock rather than budded trees. And you, you really don't want to be planting too late uh, I'm not a big fan in any way, shape, or form of these June plants, plantings, especially of clonal plants, because you're, you just put them under too much stress. But the ideal window of, of young tree planting is somewhere between, say, the 1st of March and maybe the middle of April. And when you put those trees in the ground, it now becomes a nursery. And it uh, is very important that if you have these small clonal plants, which are in four by four pots, that you'd be using a trowel to dig down next to the tree to actually put your finger into the root ball of the potted soil mm -hmm. to make sure that the, that the potted soil has enough water. And with these double line drip systems, it becomes way too easy to over irrigate those little baby trees. Uh, I typically will r run the system sometimes only maybe uh, an hour just to replenish the, the water in the potted root ball. Uh, and I know that big growers won't do it, but uh, small growers may even be wise to build basins around the newly planted trees in order to ensure that the water that they're applying goes into the root ball. I cannot overemphasize that enough. You have to race to get that rootstock up so that you have 3 8 diameter so that you can successfully bud it at 28 inches mm -hmm. uh, come the 1st of July. And it'll take two weeks before that bud then starts to push. And during that period, so now you're in the middle of July, and you have from the middle of July until the 1st of October in order to get that cyan up to over the top of the stake. So it's a race, and that's why managing that early water is so critical. Typically in the first year, we don't have a lot of micronutrient deficiency problems, although if you have real vigorously growing trees and you're in a soil that has high pH, a lot of lime in it, or you know that it's a little low on boron, it wouldn't hurt to put on a foliar spray of, of your choice that includes zinc, copper, and boron. But the second growing season, oh, and uh, let's back up, of course, and just mention a little bit about nitrogen. You have to be very careful with your nitrogen uh, levels, and, <clears throat> and I typically wait uh, as long as uh, maybe if I plant in the 1st of April, it may be um, um, the 1st of May before I even consider putting on a little bit of nitrogen. And I'm only talking about, uh, initially I might only put on half an ounce of nitrogen because of the danger of burning that small plant. Right. My theory is, under a drip system, I can always add more. But if you put on too much, you're not you're gonna be in trouble so moving on to the second year tree this is the one that is most most typically deficient in micronutrients it requires growers to be applying two or three foliar sprays uh, shortly after leaf out when you have enough foliage that you think justifies a spray even and I prefer that you do it even before your first tipping that you get your, your foliar spray on before your first tipping so that when you tip you have adequate zinc, copper, and boron in that plant already in the system in the system so that when you remove that terminal you then have those basal leaves that have adequate nutrition in order to properly force the lateral buds 
and then once those lateral buds get out to say two or three inches then it's time for another uh, foliar spray because they're struggling to accumulate enough elements in order to continue their vigorous growth. Nitrogen alone won't cause those new lateral secondary shoots to, to grow with sufficient uh, speed or vigor, rate of growth, in order to have them reach adequate length. And another comment that I'll make that is not a nutritional one, but one that I see is a very, very common mistake, and that is that after you have tipped your primary branches, that I would seriously have growers uh, think about not tipping the secondaries during the second growing season in an attempt to form tertiary branches uh, unless you have extremely high vigor and you're able to tip those secondaries by no later than maybe the 1st of July in the central part of the San Joaquin Valley, you might be able to go as late as the middle of July down in the Kern County area in the warmer spots. But I have known a very long-term excellent, excellent growers who have made the mistake of tipping the secondaries to get tertiaries in the second growing season and they have regretted it because they don't get enough length nor do they get enough girth in order to use them for tertiary branches and you typically wind up having to cut them back to the secondary and starting them over again. So those are key elements that are involved in the development of that young plant and you have to really dedicate yourself if you're, and execute these things on a timely basis uh, in order to, to succeed in having that second growing season be su a sufficient growth rate to then capitalize on the foundation that you've created for the third growing season. Great, well thank you Bob. You know. We didn't know you better. We, we all think that you were still actually full-time working as, as hard as you work for being emeritus. Yep. But we, yeah, we certainly appreciate all that you do for the industry. Read more about you know all that Bob has to share in uh, the pistachio test in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. And happy farming. Thanks. Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.